Proverbs chapter 26. As snow in the summer, odd, as rain in harvest, and in Israel time, that, that's, that's not the proper time. Samuel, when the children of Israel asked for a king, uh, it was either barley or wheat harvest. He says, I'm going to call upon the Lord, and I'm going to have them rain when it's not supposed to rain. And they got frightened. It was a sign. It was a miracle from God. It's not supposed to rain during harvest. And that's the early and latter rains, which also this the end of the tribulation coming to the second advent. So as odd as snow in the summer, rare, rain in the harvest, rare. So honor is not seemly for a fool, and yet Americans honor fools all the time. We give them television programs. We give them numbers. We give them trophies. We give them ribbons. We give them time. We give them front page. We give them, you know, put your your foot in your hand in the sidewalk. We name streets after them. And a Christian nation, and yet we defile the Bible. We're not a Christian nation. As the bird by wandering, you hear there everywhere, as the swallow by flying, so is the curse causeless shall not come. Right, the bird wanders around. He has no aim. He doesn't pull out a to-do list. The swallow, he flies. That's what he does. And what we're looking at here don't worry about a man's curse. Uh, you know, somebody, I, I speak preach. Somebody goes, I curse you in the name of Mary. I curse you in the name. I'm going to, I can see I got a voodoo doll of you. The birds wander. The swallow flies. I ain't worrying about your curse. Now, if the Bible says God put a curse upon me, something I do is accursed. Like if I were to greet uh, people who, who defile the deity of Jesus Christ, or the curse upon me is losing a reward. If I hate my brother, it's... But if a man comes up to you, I'm not, listen, I'm, there's some things to that. That voodoo and all that, there's something to it, but we don't need to worry about it. I guarantee there's probably been many people in my life, of all my years, from Norwich to, to Florida, I guarantee there have been people, you know, knocking on doors, preaching the street, handing out God. I bet, guarantee there have been somebody somewhere who's cursed me in the name of their gods. And I don't need to worry about it. A whip for a horse. Who can have a whip for a horse? What's the Bible say? What does the Bible say? I'm a Christian. I defend. What's the Bible say? A bridle for an ass. And a rod for the fuel, fool's back. Training. The whip and the bridle is for training. The rod, the correction, is to train a fool out of his foolishness. The Bible is for chastening. And we had, again, in the early American history, we had stocks, we had whipping posts. We had a correction of the means of, of criminal acts to try to, get, listen, that's what correctional institute means. Even though it doesn't work, it's to be, we're trying to correct you out of being a criminal. It, it doesn't happen. But that's the motive. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Don't speak as a fool. Least thou, you, talking to, also be like on it. You, know, you, you, you start talking foolish with a fool. People are going to be, not two fools talking. That's where sarcasm comes in. Oh, sarcasm is a sin. No, it's not. 
I'm not answering the fool I'm talking to by the fool. They're not going to think I, that guy's being sarcastic. They're not saying that guy's being foolish too. That's why you never argue with an arguer. Answer, now I said answer not a fool. Answer a fool according to his folly. Least he be wise his own conceit. Now, I'll give you a great example. Somebody comes up, oh, in the Bible, I know the Bible, and I've got, you know, what you're doing is wrong, and that's not what Jesus would do. You're driving people away. Well, you know, according to 2nd Ezra 538, the Bible says, I'm to go into the streets and just preach the gospel, and there are going to be people like you who are going to come and angry with me. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, third number is 527. And then there are other things he just answered that fool to his foolishness. Oh, you know, I, I, I believe in, in evolution. You mean to tell me all these years of, of what they say evolution is getting greater and greater. And to end up talking to an idiot like you. Wow, you're the proof that evolution's wrong. You wouldn't talk like that. Yes, I do. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. And it doesn't say what kind of priority, what kind of... It says a message, any message. We're in election time. Oh, here we go. No, I'm going to be good. And you know what they're finding now? There's mail votes, ballots and all that. They're finding postmen have, they're finding these things in the dumpster, in the guy's own house, put in a storage somewhere. They're not getting delivered to wherever you send the ballot boxes to, or the, the ballot mail. What do you say about that? That's sending a message by a fool. It did not get delivered till you cut off the feet. That's what, mo not all, that's what most of our, our postal service is. Listen, they'll find later on, you know, a guy's been in the postal service years and years and years, and they'll find that the mail's been stacked up in his house because he didn't want to deliver it. I had one time when I lived in Groton, Connecticut, we came part of it. There were, we didn't even know it. That there was a there was the alleged I should say alleged that there was a the, the, one of the mail carriers was opening up the Christmas envelope, taking out the cat, and he was reselling it. I mean, resealing everything. Well, that's the person who's cut. I mean, okay, I got the Christmas card, but I didn't get everything that was in the Christmas card. And if you're on a battlefield and where you guys send notes back and forth, unlike communications of radio today, I mean. There are instances in the Bible where they sent a messenger. And it seems that some messengers were, you know, he was a good man. He's got good news. Well, the guy, that, that guy's coming, that's bad news. I mean, we seem to get that aspect of messengers. But if a man's got a message in a hand, save his battle. I need reinforcement. Then. You got to get foot soldiers. You got to get the, I mean, you got to hurry up and get here. We need help. It's like Joab sent David a message. Man, if you don't get over here, they're going to take this city and they're going to call it after my name. So they send a messenger. And if he's a fool, he goes to the tavern. And he goes to get drunk. And he goes window shopping. And he goes wherever where he's supposed to not go to where that message is supposed to be. It says, cut it off the feet. It doesn't get delivered. And then you drink damage. The legs of a lame are not equal. I know a man who had his foot or his leg somehow was blown away in war. And he had to wear platform boots because shoes because his one, one leg was shorter than the other. That's life. You need correction shoes. You don't walk right. So the parable in the mouth of fools. 
All right, let, let me take this one step. Do we find parables in the Bible? Yes, we do. So if you got a fool that's in the pulpit, you got a fool as a pastor, you got a fool as a Sunday school teacher, you got a fool as an instructor, you got a fool dealing with parables in the Bible, you might as well just have one leg longer than the other. Again, I dealt with one man, Sunday school teacher, and he just taught wrong. You're not going to walk proper. Your walk has been hindered. Your walk by a fool teaching the Bible. And there are all kinds of unable to be walking men coming out of seminaries, coming out of Bible colleges, and they're foolish people teaching according to the Bible. <laughs> As he that bindeth a stone in a sling. You know what a slingshot is, don't you? That thing, you get the stick, you pull it back with the rock. All right, you know that, I don't know what they call it, if it says a sling. You take a rock, like David's going to go up against Goliath. He takes his rock, he puts it in the sling. And when he puts it in the sling, he ties the rock in the sling, and he super glues it the rock to the sling and he staples the rock to the sling and he just makes that rock part of that sling so when he pulls it back and lets it go the rock don't go nowhere that's what it is so is he that giveth honor to a fool and look at verse 1 America is a slingshot where we pull it back and let it go, the rock is still in the slingshot. Because it's been tied, it's been nailed, it's been it's been glued, it's been sealed to that's that's not what it's like. If David would take this rock and, and, and binding it to the slingshot, that rock would have never gone into Goliath's forehead. And that's just as stupid as giving honor to a fool which America does. They write books and things about foolish people. And if I were to give you some names on top of my head right now and I'm thinking about it, I, I would cause war. I get people so uneasy, so un... Uh, so I'll be quiet. I'll just wait to the trump of God. As a thorn goeth up in the hand of a drunkard, you say, what's that? Here's a man, he's plastered, he's drunk. He's intoxicated. He has no pain. So here's a man drunk and he's, he's got a thorn that goes, he don't feel it. He ain't going to feel it the next day when the drunkenness is off him. And we, then we read our read about a drunkard, he's got wounds without cause. I mean, he wakes up in the emergency room. Oh, what am I doing here? And you're drunk at night. He wakes up in the morning as he's drunk. And what's wrong with my hand? Ow. But he don't feel it in his drunkenness. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Again, are there parables in the Bible? And a fool teaches those parables in a church, in a seminary, in a college, or any atmosphere. You may not feel the pain when he's in the pulpit or at the podium, but the pain will come later. And maybe the infection. Think about that. You may not do the damage right now, but be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. There are being works and taught today in the pulpits of the world. Man, they're gonna. You wait till the, you wait till the crops start coming in. Man, we're we're put, we're got crops right now in the church. From from five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years ago. Out of the pulpit has caused what the, the destruction of the church today, and it's only going to get worse. Modern Bibles 
are now just coming back to bite us in the butt. And the damage they do. The great God that formeth all things, the creator, not evolution. The Bible never teaches about evolution, theistic evolution, any evolution. Both rewarded the fool and rewarded the transgressors. God will deal with the fools and the transgressors. Even if you're a saved fool, even if you're a saved transgressor, God will deal with you. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> And for the Christian, the reward is wood, hay, or stubble. A lot of the glad to see in church age Christians who haven't got the foggiest idea because of the fools in the pulpit are going to get wood, hay, and stubble, and they don't even know what wood, hay, and stubble is, and they don't even know what a gold, silver, and precious stones are because of the fools of the pulpit. I dealt with the fool the other day. We're a brand new church and we're trying to think, okay, let me go look it up. Oh, we got a woman assistant pastor. You're a fool. And I told the person what the Bible says about. A fool can't be a fool when he obeys the Bible. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Well, how do you not be ashamed? You don't be foolish. How do you not be ashamed? How do you not be foolish when you study the Bible to know what you're to do, what you're not to do? We meet fools all the time. And anybody in a public ministry, whatever you do for a public ministry, you meet these foolish people and relax. God's going to deal with them one day. If they don't repent and get right. As a dog returneth to his vomit. That's gross, but they do. I practically almost my entire life grew up with dogs since I was a little boy. Dog throws up. If you don't clean it up, he'll clean it up for you. That's a dog thing. So is a fool that returns to his folly. <laughs> That's a great illustration. Now let's go back to the pastor, preacher, Sunday school teacher, instructor. Supposedly of Christians in the church or seminary. And he teaches foolishly, and he doesn't teach what he knows. He teaches parables wrong, and he's just like a dog going back to his vomit. What is that? He goes back to his scholars. He goes back to the idiots that taught him. And you can say and quote me on idiots. Thank you very much. Stanley Hayward said idiots. And I've heard him. Maybe not personally, maybe have personally, maybe on CDs or YouTube or tapes or videos. Uh, you know, this is what my instructors told me. And your instructors, according to the Bible, is a bunch of vomit and you're going back to it. Don't talk about my people. Well, I, I've heard you teach and I've heard you talk wrong. That's folly. Professor such and such. D.B. What's D.B.? Dog vomit. I like that. See if thou a man wise his own cassette. You can't correct him. Well, that's not what the Bible says. And they're, they're not going to listen to reason. That's what the Bible says. Well, I'm the authority. You can't tell me. And you try to help them with the Bible. No, 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 no. You can't help them on the job because they know everything. That work with people like that. They know it all. All right. There is more hope of a fool than that than him. Now, we dealt with fools off and on. And chapter twenty six deals with fool. Chapter twenty, you know, the idiocy of the fool. And as bad as we've seen a fool, here is one of two things that we've seen that's good for a fool. 
And again, we run into the realm of the ministry. And I, I had one pastor, Pat, and he would sit behind his desk and everything had to be approved by him. I was not called to the ministry because I didn't get his approval. I couldn't go start a church. I had great zeal, but I couldn't go start a church because I didn't get his permission. Better than a fool. You're not going to tell me what the Bible says. Why? Because I know it. I had a guy one time. I'm never going to die. I'm not. I'll take that back. That's not what I'm I'm thinking the wages of sin is death. I've never sinned. And I said to him, listen, are you a sinner? No, 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 no. Are you going to die? That's what I was thinking. Well, and they couldn't get a different answer on him because he knew what the answer was for me. Well, if you're going to die, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Oh, well, I've never sinned. And that guy, we got into a little bit of shouting match. Him was shouting over me. And my wife, you know, kept me at bay. There's more hope in a fool than dealing with that guy. Because that guy believed in his heart, I don't sin. Okay, Bible says, all have sinned and come short of glory of God. Not me. And the guy said, not me. Well, only Jesus Christ is without sin. Oh, no, I've never sinned. And he says, and he told me, he says, if I were to sin now, I would go to hell. You want to bring a fool on? Because I have better choices with a fool than I have with that guy. You didn't get anywhere with that guy. That's one good aspect of two aspects of the Bible. Good for a fool. The slothful man said, or the lazy man, there's a lion in the way. A lion in the street. This is a lazy man. And there may be a There were lions that walked around in, in Judah, in Jerusalem. <clears throat> a prophet, a, a, a lion prophet went and got a prophet of the Lord. God said, you will not to eat no bread and water. He says, you, you've done it. You're going to leave and an ass is, and your ass and you are going to be attacked by a lion and you're going to be killed by a lion. One of the sons of the prophets says, smite me, man. Oh, I ain't going to smite you. No. Well, you're going to walk away and a lion is going to get you. And he did. And there may be a lion, but he's using it as an excuse. You know, boss, my car's broken down and I, I just can't go to work. You can't call a co-worker. You can't find a bus. Maybe if it's going to be a couple days, take a taxi. Or... My car's broken down. You can't. You don't want to. Oh, there's a lion. You can get around a lion. But you won't. It's an excuse. I mean, I would assume that there was a lion in the streets. And I would assume there's people you can call to get the lion out of the way. I would assume they have somebody. Up north, when it snows, they, they have people come out and remove the snow. Well, anywhere you you got a rapid uh, raccoon. We had a skunk one time in our garage. We paid somebody to get rid of the skunk. I could never go in my garage. Why? Well, there's a skunk there. Call the exterminator. Oh. Well, the phone's over there. Eh, excuses, excuses. Dealing with a guy. Well, well, you come to church. Well, that church doesn't have windows. That's an excuse. God don't take excuses. As the door turns upon its hinges. Back and forth. 
so does the slothful same man upon his bed. He just goes back and forth, back and forth, and nowhere and doesn't accomplish nothing. No rest for the weary. Rolls back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No accomplishment. Lay down, get a good night's sleep, and wake up in the morning and do something. Oh, there's a warning. 